Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before we get to that, I want to thank you for coming here and for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have on the agenda is Biden administration ends support for trans surgeries on minors. This is an interesting story. Uh, I didn't highlight anything in it because I'm not going to read anything to you, but um, the Biden administration, specifically the DOD, was pushing WPATH to uh, change the wording of their documentation to make it less obvious that they were working on minors. But it all blew up in their faces when the WPATH files were released and people realized that they had no uh, scientific basis to justify gender transforming surgery on minors. And so I suspect that's why the administration has ended support. They realized that it would be a political liability. <laughs> they, they didn't do it because it was good for the children. They did it because it was a political liability. And true, that's it's true that it's changing all across the world. Uh, I think in Britain they have completely banned uh, pre-adult gender surgery. The second item that I have is a troubling article about mRNA vaccines, two rare vaccine side effects detected in a large global study. There was a statistically significant increase in Guillain-Barr syndrome within 42 days after the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 76 events were expected and 190 events were observed. Uh, observed to expected ratio is 2.49, 9.5% confidence. A statistically significant increase risk of CVST was also observed following the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The study also confirmed significantly higher risks of myocarditis following the first, second, and third doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, as well as pericarditis after the first and fourth dose of Moderna vaccine and third dose of AstraZeneca vaccine in the 42 days following vaccination. Uh, as well as those known symptoms, known risks, the researchers also identified a possible safety signal for acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, uh, boy, these medical terms, encephalomyelitis, AEDM, and transverse myelitis with both viral vector and mRNA vaccines. Wow. Wouldn't it have been nice if we'd have known this before we agreed to take the vaccine? You know, if you're going to take a vaccine, you should be informed of all the risks. But they were in such a hurry to get these things out, and they were, the, they were going to save the world, that they said, we'll worry about the risks later. And now uh, we're finding out the risks are severe in some cases. Permanent brain damage. The third item that I have is, this is a long running article by Cheryl Atkinson. She's had it up on her site for years now. It's media mistakes in the Trump era, the definitive list. And that list now is up to 160 items where the media has basically lied about what Trump said. And everybody talks about all the lies that Trump tells, but they don't talk about the lies that the media tells about Trump. So uh, this might be something you can use as a reference. If you, if you have a question about something that Trump has said, you can go to this list and see whether it's true or not. And she's been maintaining this list for several years now. I mean, I think at least five or six years, long, long time. And well, you can see the very first entry was in August 
through November of 2016. Uh, I'll just read this one to you just to give you an idea, a taste of it. The New York Post published modeling photos of Trump's wife Melania and reported that they were taken in 1995. Various news outlets relied on that date to imply that Melania, an immigrant, had violated her visa status. But the media got the date wrong. Politico was among the news agencies that later issued a photo date correction. So that's just one example. A lot of them are, you know, you might consider minor things, but uh, considering the fact that everybody is absolutely convinced that Trump is lying about everything, it might be interesting for you to check out and see how many of those are actually lies. Now, this next item that I have on the agenda is pretty troubling. Um, some whistleblowers reported that Hezbollah was keeping military arms and explosives at the Beirut airport. And this article is kind of a follow-up to that where the, uh, the officials of Lebanon gave a tour of the airport to refute the arms claims. But the interesting thing is they were not allowed to see everything at the airport. So they, we still don't know, the journalists still don't know whether or not the claim is true. Whistleblowers are saying that they've seen the arms being shipped in there. So you may want to reconsider if you had plans to fly to Beirut because it could be unsafe to fly in there. And finally, I have one last item on the agenda. Israeli terror victims are suing the UNRWA for a leading billion-dollar money laundering operation that funded Hamas. That's uh, I don't I I didn't even know you could sue the UN, but I guess you can. So the uh, the uh, terror victims are suing UNRWA, and as you know, I've shown you articles before that the UNRWA was storing weapons for Hamas and was teaching their children to hate Jews. So the UN has a lot to answer for. Whether they ever will be called to task on it, I don't know. That's the news for today. I pray for you that you will have an abundant life and that you will live a long time and be healthy and that God will bless you with his peace. I pray for the same thing for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.